Welcome to That Crazy Adventure, a Roblox JoJo game that hopefully I can recommend to you guys because it's been a very long time since I've been able to recommend a game and we might be onto something here. There's just one very large problem, but we'll get there. First things first, I wanna give a quick shout out to Ann Elias, who was the person who recommended this game. Usually when people recommend me games, I just ignore them. But for some reason, because I was content starved this week and didn't know what to do, uh, I decided to play this game. And I don't think I'm gonna regret it for once. So thank you. It'd be nice if more people suggested games that were actual games and not be game or woken. I don't know. Anyways, main menu, already off to a phenomenal start. And by that I mean, there's a patch notes tab. You can open up the patch notes, check what the last few patches have done, and overall, any time that you don't need to use a wiki page or a Discord link in order to actually see what's going on with the game and what's been changed, that's always really good and I appreciate it. Same thing goes for the suggestions tab. I feel like this would get very out of hand very quickly with people just being obnoxious and spamming garbage. But I mean, if it works, it works. With those things though, we jump into the game. And the first thing, just like with the Sakura stand video, is I've gotta turn off the music. And guess what? When I go into the settings and turn off the music, you're never gonna believe this. It actually turns off the music. How mind-blowing is that? There are also a few other quality of life features in here that just should be expected, but aren't, and so I gotta shout them out when they're here. Things like turning off the screen shake and being able to directly rebind your sprint, shift lock, and dash keys. One pretty major problem though, um, and that's that I'm in the middle of a forest and I have no f***ing clue what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Yeah, the Roblox JoJo game classic of throwing you in there at level zero and assuming that you're gonna know where to go when you don't. So now you just gotta wander around and talk to people and hope you end up in the right spot. Also as a side note, before I forget and before we start talking about, well, everything else I have to talk about in this game, why the hell is time acceleration so fucking loud? Like seriously, I can't explain this to you in words. Like, I no joke had to turn down my headphone volume every single time someone used time acceleration and it got real old real fast. Somebody go in and turn that down, thank you. I went over and talked to Zapelli and he told me that he wanted an item and $5,000 to get a spec, which uh, screams to me about some other game that's on my mind, I just can't quite name it. I wandered around a little bit more and thankfully I ran into an NPC with a big exclamation point over their head. Talk to them and thank God, now we're on track. Rohan appears to be the first person you're supposed to interact with, and he talks as if he knows you're coming, but you didn't have any reason to actually come over here. So I don't know if I missed the actual introduction, or if there's supposed to be an opening cutscene. I, I don't have a clue. I don't know. I assume this is where you're supposed to start. It's where I was able to start, so that's what we're going with. I talked to him, and he wanted me to go find Koichi, so... Then I have an actual quest. And now that I have the quest, I have a little map marker that shows me where Koichi is. So now I have direction. Now I'm not wandering around hopelessly. Thank God. Head over to Koichi and he gives me a quest to go beat up some bullies because of course it's a Roblox Jojo game and we've got to murder bullies. That's the answer. I walk over and I start punching them and um, and they, and they, don't, they don't do anything. I'm not entirely sure why, but the NPCs just stood there and took damage and didn't fight back at all. So I thought, well, that's kind of weird, but I suppose maybe these NPCs are bugged, so we'll move on. I talked to Koichi again, he wanted me to go re-talk to Rohan, so I did. Went to talk to Rohan, and Rohan was like, all right, I need you to go get me a coffee for some reason. So I was like, okay, whatever. Went down the street, got him a coffee, came back, and then he told me that he wanted me to go talk to Jotaro. Uh, so I was like, okay, I'll go talk to Jotaro, awesome. So I did, I talked to Jotaro, and he told me that there was a stand user that he needed me to take down, and that he'd give me a stand arrow in order to take down the stand user. Um, and then I, then I didn't get an arrow. So I figured, well, maybe you get the arrow from completing the quest. So I walked over to where the stand user was supposed to be, and he was there. 
I went over to fight him, and um, and he just stood there and took damage, and he just like wouldn't fight back at all. So remember at the beginning of the video where I said that I hoped that I'd be able to recommend this game to you, but I'm not so sure that I can? Well, here's why. Uh, as it currently stands, the NPCs don't work. And so like 50% of the game doesn't work at all. This wasn't a fluke with the server either. I quit out, I joined another server, I went and checked, they were broken there too. Quit out, joined a third server, tried it there, also broken. I don't know if this is a recent occurrence and I just got really unlucky when I logged on and they just recently broke this, or if it's been this way for a while. I could only find one video on the internet of this game from a little while ago, and in that video, the NPCs actually did things. So I don't know what happened, but the game quite literally does not work at the time of the recording this. Hopefully, by the time this comes out, which will be about a week after I record it, they'll have fixed this. And if it is fixed, then you can go to the comment section right now, and there will be a pinned comment, and it will either say, this is fixed, or the game still doesn't work. I really hope that it's, this is fixed, because I think people actually should potentially go play this game. Moving on, from the game not working at all. The next quest tasked me with going to find an informant, and that informant would be able to tell me the secret of Yoshikage Kira's new identity. Unfortunately, when I got there and I talked to the informant, he told me that he wasn't going to help me if I didn't pay him $5,000 first. And now I'm getting flashbacks to that unnamed game again. Is there a particular reason that we're supposed to get gated off right now because we need to get $5,000 first? I don't have a clue. I don't know what the design reason for this was other than copying that other game. It's double as problematic because if you've played these games before, then you know that clearly there's got to be some sort of quest giver around here which will give you a quest so that way you can feasibly generate the $5,000. If you haven't played these types of games before, then you're going to have absolutely no idea what's going on. And that's made double as problematic when you consider the fact that after you talk to the informant, you get no direction on what quests you can or cannot do other than these little level indicators that pop up over the NPC's heads. So like over here we have Jotaro who tasks you with killing Dio and he says level 25 plus. So because we're not level 25, we can't do that quest. That's the closest quest to the informant where you would have gotten this quest and then needed to get $5,000. No, the real quest that you're supposed to do, I think, is this quest over here that has you beat up thugs and this quest giver has nothing over top of their head. Wait, 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 wait. it has nothing? There's no level requirement. Okay, well sure, that means that anyone can do the quest, right? But do you know who also has no level requirements over their heads? All of the shops and all of the quest NPCs for the main storyline quest. So it would be extremely easy to assume that you're just not at this place yet unless you randomly go up and talk to them and get lucky. This is one of those instances where I can absolutely see people getting to this point in the game, being totally lost on how to get $5,000 and just up and quitting right there which is really a shame and I just don't understand why this even needed to happen. Maybe I do. Maybe the idea is to introduce you to side quests so you know about them later once you finish the storyline. But I mean, for right now, all it serves to do is confuse the hell out of you, especially since even as a veteran player who knew what I was gonna have to do to get that money, I still had to just wander around aimlessly and hope I find the right quest NPC. This goes for later quests too. I'm jumping a bit ahead of myself here, but after you complete the storyline, or what's currently there, afterwards it wants you to level up in order to get to a certain level so you can prestige. The problem stems from if you complete the storyline and then you know there's a level 25 quest giver, then that's all well and good. You can go to the thugs quest, farm that up into level 25, and then go to the level 25 quest. That's great, but then you don't know what comes after the level 25 quest. And if we backtrack a little bit, if you hadn't run into the level 25 quest, then you might think that the only way to level up is through the thugs, which is gonna take absolutely forever because you get diminishing returns, obviously, as the level requirement XP goes up, but the XP you're getting for the quest remains the same. I ran into this personally with the level 25 quest itself, 
where I did the level 25 quest over and over and over again, not sure where or what level I needed to get to next. And I wouldn't learn until later that there's a level 35 quest giver that will help you after you get to level 35 from 25. So I did a whole lot of extra grinding for no reason because I had no way of knowing there was another NPC. I could have assumed, but I had no idea where the hell to find it. This game feels like it desperately needs that feature from that really bad Roblox JoJo game I played a little while ago. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but it had a thing where you could go into the menu and toggle all of the available quests on the map. I don't know if you should necessarily toggle all of the quests, but you should have some level of it showing you where the next quest NPC is and how high of a level you need to be in order to use it. That way it completely removes the confusion of how high of a level do I need to get and where do I need to go. It's just unnecessary and causes problems for no reason. Speaking of unnecessary, once you actually do get the $5,000 and go back to the informant, they don't even take the $5,000. Which, let me make this clear, that is a very good thing. I'm glad they don't take the $5,000 because that would really suck. That being said, the quest asks you to get $5,000 so that you can pay the informant. And then you don't even pay the informant. It doesn't make any sense. If the idea was that they wanted to introduce you to side quests, this is not the way to do it. And I think this part of the storyline desperately needs to be changed because it's just wholly unnecessary. Anyways, after that, you finally go and talk to Rohan about the information, and he tells you that you need to go talk to Hayato. So you talk to Hayato, Hayato tells you to talk to Josuke, you talk to Josuke, and he tasks you with bringing down the new Kira. Of course, this is where I would talk about the Kira fight if there was a Kira fight, as currently the AI doesn't work, so there isn't a Kira fight. You just sit there, punch, 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 and they die. After they die, you go talk to Josuke, and, well, that's a wrap. The storyline is over, it's currently incomplete, and I'm not gonna knock them for having an incomplete storyline. I don't expect all of these games to be perfectly flawless or 100% finished, so it is what it is. And for the rest of the video, I'm gonna throw you all for a loop and say nothing but good things. No, that wasn't a joke, I'm serious. The rest of that crazy adventure is legitimately good and it feels like someone directly paid attention to the things that I always bring up when it comes to criticisms about games and addressed them. When it comes to the actual feeling of the game, it doesn't feel terrible. My usual litmus test when it comes to how the feeling of the game is gonna be is based off of their dash. If I can jump, turn my camera around 180 degrees, and dash, if I dash forward, then I know we're in for a bad time. This game, you dash where your camera's looking, and I already know that we're in good hands. I'm not kidding. Block buffering, something that's so incredibly simple and so overlooked, yet a stupidly important feature all but required in these kinds of games, and it's already here. I don't even have to make a comment about it. M1 combat that doesn't make the game feel like an active stun simulator. NPCs that don't take 400 billion years to respawn. That's right, if you kill a boss and then go back and talk to the NPC that just gave you the quest in order to do it again, the boss is respawned by the time you're ready to kill him again. Holy sh is that even possible? Yeah, it is. Cause I'm, cause I'm playing it. Skill trees, a vast amount of prestige options that not only let you store stands and a fair few at that, but also store specs without it being paywalled. Is this game real life? Oh yeah, they've got an actual shop with reasonable prices. Like you can actually go to a shop and buy Rokas and Arrows among other items. You can actually buy them. It's not gambling. It's not wandering around the map hoping you find them. You can just buy it. un believable And so all this is why it totally breaks my heart that I can't just blindly recommend this game to you and say you should give it a chance as some sort of alternative because the people behind it actually seem to know what the hell they're doing. And that's because the game doesn't work. Why do you guys gotta do this to me? To the developers of that crazy adventure. Why didn't the game work? Oh, 
is so close. So close. But seriously, it seems like the people behind this game legitimately understand the game that they're creating and what they need to do in order to make it fun. This is a deep understanding of mechanics that I haven't seen in any of the other Roblox JoJo games that I've ever played. I can imagine it's a fluke because I don't think any of these things could be a fluke and I'm pretty sure all of them have to be conscious decisions by the developers. I've said it on record many times that I think that Roblox's Unbreakable struggles a lot because their owner and their development team just is sort of almost out of touch with what they need to do in order to make their game fun. The general level of control here is just so much better than so many other things I played, I almost can't get over it. And I really, really, really hope that they decide to go ahead and fix their AI so that way I can wholeheartedly recommend the game and maybe play a little bit more of it myself because I'm actually a little bit invested for once. I wanna see what's at the end of the tunnel. I wanna see what all of the stands have to offer. For once, I actually sorta of care. I think as it stands right now, this game is criminally underrated. It only had like 240 people when I went to go play it, which comparing to games like Stand Upright Rebooted, which I don't know how well that game's doing right now, but I can tell you that that game had over a thousand players and that makes me wanna gag and jump out of my window when I think that that had more players than this did. Like, come on guys, how? But you know what? I'm gonna flip flop right at the end of the video. I don't care if the AI doesn't work. Even if the AI doesn't work, this game still deserves more players than Stand Upright Rebooted. So if you haven't played it already, which you more than likely haven't based on the player numbers, I recommend you give it a go. I think it's worth your time, and I think it's clear the developers probably know what they're doing. Assuming that they didn't just, you know, steal everything from somewhere, which I hope they didn't. That'll double break my heart if it turns out that they just stole half the game from somewhere else. But anyways, that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed the video and you appreciated the recommendation, then feel free to leave a like and subscribe. If you didn't, don't do those things. And with all that being said, have a wonderful day night wherever you are, and I'll see you guys next time.